If you've seen some of my previous videos, then it probably won't come as much of a surprise that I've come back to have another go at doing some more mechs. I really enjoyed doing the previous ones that I had a go at on this channel, and so I'm always on the lookout for various pieces that might be useful in another project. Now actually just after I finished my previous mech build I was just out shopping and I happened to notice this which I think is a garden sprayer so you would connect a hose to it and it would spray water everywhere. But the minute I saw it I thought ah oh, there we go that's going to be perfect for a three legged mech. So it was only a few pounds so I thought well I'll grab that and uh, that will come in useful for the next project. So something like this should probably do the trick. I'm just using a bit of blue tack and a few bits and pieces here to try and figure out how this might look. Now legs, arms and hands are often a little bit complicated when you're making them for mechs and pretty much for any other humanoid sort of sculpture because they can be quite intricate and they have a lot of moving parts. So for a mech with three legs, obviously that's going to increase the amount of bits and pieces and the complexity of the build. So I was wondering if there was a way that I could create the legs in a quick and easy fashion and I happened to be out again uh, doing a bit of shopping uh, in a DIY store and I noticed these. Now these are cupboard hinges, uh, as you can probably see, um, and they're quite complicated. Some, some versions you can get are quite simple, but these particular ones have got quite a lot of uh, leverage in them. And the minute I saw them, I thought, actually, they're going to be brilliant for some legs. So as you can see, if I move this top part here, um, the entire piece moves up and down. So what I can do is add a piston to the top bit, and then that should look like a robotic mechanism that can drive the legs. So in order to get these into the correct form, I need to remove some of the brackets that are here for attaching to the actual cupboard doors. So I'm just drilling out some of the rivets that are holding these in place. So there you go. So that looks like something I could uh, use in the model. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'll probably need to um, cut down part of this to allow me to add some additional mechanical detail in. But I think that's looking pretty good. Um, so I've just taped these in place for the time being so I can start getting an idea of how this thing will look. Um, and as you can see, I've actually started thinking that maybe some of these brackets that uh, come with the hinges could actually be used for the robot's feet. So I'll come back to that a bit later on. I think I probably need to add some additional mechanical detail to that to get that working. But I think that's looking pretty good good so far. So turning my attention to the main body, this project actually went back and forth a number of times. So I actually found myself going down a number of dead ends which didn't actually go anywhere. So my initial thinking was that this could be a sort of a futuristic type robot. And to that end, I was looking at this shower gel bottles. It's got some quite sharp lines in it, which I thought looked quite futuristic. So I started filling in the gaps with some Chavant oil clay with a view to start making a mold of this. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because this is a shower bottle. I think some of the silicon could easily have got into the gaps in between the lid of the bottle um, if I hadn't actually filled those in. So I made a mould of this and cast up a resin copy of it. Once I had that, I then started adding some styrene strips onto it to slowly build up a uh, body. Now, I often find that if you start off with an interesting looking piece, you can sort of keep adding to it and it sort of gives you a starting point for the uh, body as a whole. What I also had was this unusual looking tin shape which I'd saved from a few Christmases ago and at the time I was thinking that this could be some sort of interesting engine section or something like that so I started adding in some mechanical bits and pieces trying to build up something that would look interesting. Now I got to about this stage and I started thinking actually this probably isn't looking quite right. So um, I decided to abandon that idea and go in a different direction. Now I had been thinking for a while that maybe I could do some form of steampunk mech or some sort of retro sort of sci-fi thing. So to that end I came back to one of my favourite objects for model making which are these clear plastic domes. And I've used these quite extensively in some of my previous projects. So what I thought was I could start using one of these as a basis for a model. So I started putting this dome section together with some pieces of styrene plastic. But after a while, again, I found that I'd sort of gone in the wrong direction with this. And this bit actually turned out to be a little bit too wide. So I finally ended up using another clear plastic dome which had a smaller diameter. And I actually found that this one looked about right. Now I was initially thinking that I could perhaps wrap some styrene plastic around this over a frame to try and create the main body. But what I found was I actually had this tube which is from a ventilation fan and it's almost exactly the right diameter, it's a little bit too wide. So what I decided to do was to cut a section out of the back which would allow me to then squeeze it together and make it fit the clear plastic dome. So what I'm doing is just cutting it down to size and then cutting a section out of the back. So 
So there we go, I've just taped that in place so I can get an idea of how it will look. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now in order to marry those two pieces together, of course it took a fair bit of sanding. So um, I've sanded those down so there's a nice smooth transition between the clear plastic and the white. What I also need is a solid frame for this to actually sit on. So what I'm doing is cutting out some circles of plywood. And I've just built this frame over the garden sprayer that the main body can then slot over. And as you can see that fits quite nicely on top like that. I'm now turning my attention to adding some additional mechanical detail. So I've got this piece of guttering pipe which I've cut to size and that's going to sit on the back like that as though it were some sort of exhaust or air vent or something like that. I'm also adding this piece of clear perspex tube on the back as well. That's just going to sit over this um, sort of uh, water intake from the garden sprayer. So I guess that looks a bit like an exhaust as well. What I can now do is turn my attention to my selection of cast resin pieces. These are pieces that I've made from previous projects, um, so they're casts of like deodorant bottles and various other lids and things that I've found. Um, and I've got loads and loads of these, so these are really, really useful for just sort of piecing things together to sort of come up with some mechanical detail. Um, so what I'm actually doing for this project is just blue tacking everything in place, so nothing's glued just yet. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just because it allows me to move things around if they don't quite work. What I've sometimes found is I've sort of super glued things in place and then found that they actually get in the way of something else I've decided to add at a later date. So um, if they're blue tacked in place I can shift these about without any problem. So I think that's looking pretty good as a sort of a mechanical section on the back. It took me a little bit of back and forth, but I've made this viewing port out of styrene plastic. Getting the curves right on this took a little bit of trial and error, but I got there in the end, so this is going to sit on there like that, and that's uh, going to be where the pilot looks out. Now this being a retro mech, I wanted to have lots and lots of bolts and rivets over it. So what I've got is these uh, scale acorn nuts, which look quite nice. I've got these at a variety of different scales, uh, but these ones look about right. Now, of course, I'm going to need millions and millions of these, and I've only got 10, I think. So uh, what I've decided to do is actually make a strip of these that I can then make a mold of and cast up multiple copies. So what I'm doing is gluing these onto a strip of styrene plastic, and I'm just using a spacer here to make sure I get them all evenly spaced. As with previous moulds, I'm then making up an enclosure out of foam board and hot glue, and that means I can then pour my silicon over that to create the mould. Now that's set overnight so there's my mould and that now means that I can pour in some resin and start casting up some copies. The first time I did this I realised that um, this might prove a little bit tricky because I was getting some air trapped in the um, indentations where the bolts go. As you can see from my first cast here uh, not all of the bolts have come out. So rather than having to pressure cast these each time, which can be a bit of a pain, um, what I found was that if I put a thin piece of wire into each of the indentations as the resin flowed in, that created a channel for the resin to flow down and allowed the air to escape easily. So after a bit of trial and error, I found that worked quite well. One thing that was quite handy was because the piece of styrene plastic that I use as a base for this is quite thin, uh, the casts are quite thin as well. What that means is that it can actually easily bend around the curved surface of the model, so that's quite useful. Right, so there's some strips of bolts tacked in place. 
Um, and one thing I've noticed straight away here is I've got quite a large area to fill on the front of the mech. Now this could be covered in mechanical detailing or some additional panels but I started thinking well maybe we can do something a little bit more interesting here. And one of my other interests as you probably know from my channel is sculpture so I've been thinking for a while is there a way for me to combine sculpture together with um, a mech build so I started thinking well maybe I can actually have a sculpture on the front of this and maybe I could also cast it up using cold casting which is a technique I covered in a previous project recently. So I could have this as a sculptural element which is cast up in brass which I could then polish up and I thought that might look quite nice. So um, that's what I'm going to do here. So in order to allow me to do that easily what I'm going to do is cover the front of the mech in foil. The reason I'm doing that is so I can easily remove the sculpture when I need to. Now in order to get a lot of uh, sculptural detail into this fairly easily, what I'm going to do is use these pre-made pieces. So I'm just trying to come up with a motif effectively by placing these pieces together. So I'm using a base of monster clay just to hold everything in place and fill in some gaps. I'm just trying to place all of these pieces together and trying to come up with a uh, nice overall design. It took me a while to sort of figure out exactly how I wanted to do this so as I often do when I'm a little bit stuck for ideas I turn my attention to some art books to see if I could get some inspiration as to how to proceed and one artist I particularly like is this guy called Necro who does these really ornate um, digital images as you can see they've all got a very sort of a sculptural element to them there's lots of filigree and sort of um, ornate elements in there so I found these quite useful in sort of pointing me in the right direction um, as a lot of his pieces often involve faces with sort of sculptural details added. So I found this quite useful in sort of giving me a direction to aim for. So I found that really useful and I do recommend picking up his book if you can find it because there's some really really nice stuff in there. What I also want to have is some mechanical detail coming from the underside of the mech, underneath the chassis effectively, uh, joining up to the legs. So what I'm doing is using these springs and some further cast resin pieces to add some additional mechanical detail into the legs. Now the legs need some pistons and things like that, so what I've got here is an angle cutter. I've seen a few people using these online, um, they're pretty cheap on eBay, this was only about £8, so I thought I'd get one of those, and it's actually proved to be really, really useful. So what I'm doing is using it to cut some pieces of styrene uh, into the correct shape, glue those together, and these are going to create a frame which is going to hold some pistons in place. just using a styrene rod here to hold my uh, pieces in orientation uh, so once the glue is dried and um, when I take the styrene rod away they will be held in the correct place. Right, so there we go, that's how they're going to attach to the pistons. Now, in order to make these pistons fit to the legs, I'm going to have to cut the legs down a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the Dremel isn't quite powerful enough to get through these, I don't think, so I've had to break out the angle grinder to cut through these. So that's how the pistons are going to sit on the legs. Now 
Now what I also need to do is to create some feet for the robot. So what I've done is to make this piece out of styrene plastic and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, and I've made a mold and cut up multiple copies. Now using the same technique, I've also made these smaller sections and I've attached these to the bracket which came with the door hinges to create some feet for the robot. Now once I actually had these attached, I started thinking that maybe they were a little bit too big, so I may actually remove the uh, front section there and have them a bit smaller like this. But because um, it's all blue set together, I can sort of uh, move things about and see how they look. So I may change my mind on that for the uh, final version, but we'll see how we go. I also need some guns um, and using the same cast pieces, I've glued these together and also added some styrene tube. Once I've added a few additional bits I've come up with these, so I think these look quite nice as some gun uh, turrets and they attach to the side of the mech like this. So there we go, I think that's looking pretty good so far, now obviously there's lots of other bits and pieces to do, I've still got to mould my sculpture section and I may even add a few additional sculptural elements on there as well, uh, I've got to glue everything in place of course and um, do a few other bits and pieces, so plenty to do, but I think that's it for this part of the video, so watch out for part 2, uh, but for the time being, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.